Hello and welcome to Only a Podcast. Two blokes upside down and many miles from home talk about popular culture and unpopular culture too. Books, music, films, the news, what we had for dinner last night, everything is fair game. We've no idea what we're doing or why, but we're going to do it. Episode 6, The Beatles Get Back Special. Hello everyone, um, thanks for tuning in. This is going to be a bit different to one of our usual episodes. This is going to be uh, a special episode uh, where we talk about the, the recently released uh, The Beatles Get Back documentary, uh, which was on Disney+. Plus. Um, started streaming a week or so ago and I think uh, I've been completely obsessed by it since. I think you've been yeah. the same, Captain. Yeah. But- yeah. Um, <laughs> And also, I've been obsessed by the Beatles uh, in the lead up to it, <laughs> you know, in anticipation of it. Uh, so, yeah, we, we always planned we'd do a special uh, as quickly after it, uh, after after the broadcast as we could. And here we are. Yeah, I, I wanted to find time to watch it twice, but uh, but no, that's gone out the window. It's it's, it's too long. Uh, typical Peter Jackson length, but uh, I've watched. Uh, selected parts of it twice, um, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's an amazing thing. It, it is right. That's the end of the show. Then thanks for yeah. <laughs> thanks for yeah. your uh, thank you. Yeah. Very good night. <laughs> um, okay, so um, yeah, we're not going to do a review because there's plenty of reviews, so we're not going to do that. And uh, I think what we just do is uh, give our thoughts and feelings on it. And I think uh, Captain's going to kick us off with a bit of background as to what happened before this film and how it came about and why it came about. Yeah. Uh, mainly because it, there was context added in Peter Jackson's film uh, with the sort of slideshow at the beginning and, um, and a quick summary, but um, it didn't really explain uh, how they got there and why they were in the state they were in. So I just thought I'd chuck something together um, because that following the small matter of completing Sergeant Pepper, the magical mystery tour and Yellow Submarine, um, they kind of needed a bit of a holiday. So they went off to see the Maharishi, um, which was basically between February and March, uh, February and April, uh, 1968. Um, and the White Album, uh, The Beatles, as it should properly be called, um, was started at the end of May 68. Because um, whatever else they'd done in India, um, and there was disillusionment from pretty much all of them about what happened there. Um, they'd not had any drugs, um, and they had got down to songwriting. Um, and when they got back, they went round to George's house and bashed down uh, 23 demos uh, called the Isha Sessions, or the Isha Demos, which you can find, obviously, in various reissues. I think they're on the, if you're on Spotify or whatever, they're on the White Album Super Deluxe Edition or whatever yep. it's called, are they? They are yeah, they're on in the that, that one, 2018 yeah. release, I think, and well worth listening yep. to. Um, yep. So they were in a good state before that, uh, the White Album. There, it was, uh, they'd had enough material to go in and work on. Um, they'd been on free studio time for quite a while, so they had been working in the same way they work in Get Back. They basically just find a free slot in Abbey Road, turn up. Um, and they were also back on drugs again. Um, I read in uh, in books, it's quite surprising that Lennon had at one point convened a meeting to tell them that he was Jesus, um, which probably gives you a, an indication about just how far out there he was. Um, but because they had free studio time, they could just meander along. and It was a job and just pop in and um, each song could be led by its creator, and there wasn't really much group participation going on, um, except for one instance, which I'll come in in a middle, in, in a minute. Uh, that McCartney was already pushing. He was already keeping them busy. It was what, you know, he really did. Um, so the way of working portrayed in a Get Back film, it's, it's already been happening, and he'd been pretty much doing it since Sergeant Pepper. Um, but uh, let's get to it. The White Album it wrapped up in October 68. After five months, uh, they went off for a break there. Um, they'd all, uh, well, a couple of them had played live. Harrison had been jamming with musicians in California. Um, uh, Lennon had done the Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus. So they were all 
into playing live. I think uh, McCartney missed it, and Starr was okay with doing it um, when they get back sessions as long as he could get it all done before his starring role in uh, the Magic Christian film. Um, and they'd all played together on the White Album in Happiness is a Warm Gun, pretty much. So they all sat around and enjoyed that song and completed it. it. took a long time, but at least they did it. So they were, they, were, they were in that kind of shape. But the difference was that there wasn't much in the tank. There were no real songs in any kind of shape. Um, they'd done it all. They didn't need the money, but... They said they'd go in and do this live thing and the film crew was booked and the studio was booked and begin film, uh, begin get back. That's that's where it begins. And the idea was it was going to be a, well, I don't know if they were really sure, but was it going to be a television special um, of, well, much like we've just had, but I think it was meant to be a television special, wasn't it? Or was it, meant, was it scheduled to be a film at the time? Um. I don't there really was know. there was talk about that. There was talk about would it be a documentary? Would it be on TV? Yeah. Uh, would there be a, even be a live performance? So there they were various suggestions about where they would go. And no, mm, uh, yeah. I think George and Ringo in particular didn't really want to go anywhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> there was talk right. about North Africa, a, a, yeah, an Tripoli. amphitheater in Tripoli, and mm. uh, one or two other. Uh, exotic places. Um, mm. The Houses of Parliament suggests, Paul, let's go and get thrown out. Um, yeah. Which, in the end... Uh, that would have been good. Would have been, would have been good. It wasn't, it wasn't too far from, from what actually happened. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, so off they went uh, with virtually no songs uh, on this kind of work a day. Let's just turn up. We've got, got about a month. Let's just... Um, Crank it out. It'll be fine. Yeah. I think it, uh, I think it was doomed from the start looking at the film. I mean, uh, well, it, well, they got, a, they got a product at the end, but the, the, the original plan was doomed from the start. The, the environment, I mean, that kind of aircraft hangar, freezing cold, bare wall place they were at in Twickenham was not conducive to, you know, creativity, was it? And that was quite clear. Yeah. Um, uh, but if if I, mean, I guess if you if you if one of your thoughts is a TV special or something like that, then you're in the place where you will eventually right. build the set and all that kind of thing. Yeah. There's a lot of talk about about the set um, mm. uh, in the film. Um, so I guess that was a thinking, uh, mm. that was rather woolly thinking, of which the whole thing was really, and, and that was it. Um, uh, yeah, no one was really doing the the sensible role apart from Paul and um mm. which just eventually uh rubbed a couple of them up the wrong way let's say uh, yeah yeah so um okay so that's the background i guess so w- let's just talk about our general thoughts really on on the the film i mean um I'll sum it up in five words for me captain what do you reckon five words yeah um tortured creative process comes good uh, mm. <laughs> maybe yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that'll do let me try and do it in five words um, uh, oh, I can't how can I do it in five words they were geniuses all along because they were really um, it didn't matter I don't think whatever pressures they were under however dry the environment was whatever was going on you, you saw it there with your eyes didn't you geniuses as that yeah I, I in in in, uh, in many um of the songs uh, obviously they were created from virtually nothing in, in the case of get back that's the one that's been attracting all the attention because mm. mccartney basically just sits down with his bass and makes it up on the spot a george is yawning yeah. initially yawning a ring, yawning exactly a, a ring goes looking at him as yeah. if to, as wondering where this is going um and eventually, after sort of a minute and a half, a minute mm. and a half, uh, yeah. it, it becomes a sort of miraculous shape. And George... But there, there was picks, a moment, yeah. It, yeah. George just did a double take, didn't he? He's like, ah, yeah. oh, you've got something. And it's like minute. telepathy. It was telepathy, wasn't it? Yeah. They knew. Like, yep, yeah, we, we've got one. I've got, uh, you know, I've got, I've got to buy it. <laughs> like they were fishing for a song and I've got to buy it. Here we go. Help He's, me land it. Yeah, he starts, to, he starts to chip in with chords on his Les Paul and then Ringo starts yeah. to clap. Yeah. And it goes from there, and, uh, and yeah, it's an amazing thing. Uh, and another yeah. one, another one is they're all sitting around talking about the set, 
um, and, and you know, what are they going to build for the TV studio or whatever the hell it is? Um, and Ringo says something like, that it, McCartney's in the background and tinkling away on the piano at Let It Be. Mm. And Ringo says, oh, I could watch him play piano all day kind of thing. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. There's, there's creativity going on whilst sort of admin is being done, yeah. you know, that's my card is in the background. Doing that's right, this. just in the background. What um, about that little little sequence, it's a minute long or something, where McCartney's, um, I think he's on the piano and he's jamming Martha, my dear, or something like that, and he's got the young, I don't know who he is, studio lad in the green shirt, and he's giving him tips on music theory, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> talking this kid through. Oh. Yeah, this is how you do it, son. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, amazing, amazing. Um, yeah, th- th- uh, things that stood out for me, uh, you know, generally speaking, especially at the start, episode one or part one, uh, was John. Well, two things about John. John wasn't really present. He didn't really say much. And he's, you know, he's the clown of the group. He's the mouth, isn't he? And uh, he was very, very subdued, I thought. Uh, um, subdued? And- Are you doing the air quotes with the subdued there? Because uh, um, I'm yeah, sure well, yeah. at times he was um, chemically subdued well that's um, what i was wondering i, I don't know because yeah he seemed very calm if you know what i mean and that and the whole yoko thing you know you, we've all heard the stories about yoko and blah 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 blah. well it's all right wasn't it and i think there was one scene in there where paul was kind of went out of his way to defend yoko i don't think there was yep. any problem there yep and, um, and we see her just sat there chatting to linda and and you know yes. so she's, it's not this great frigid no it wasn't um, Thing going on, but that's no excuse to let her near a microphone, though, is it? Uh, no, although it did help them sort of primarily scream when it did. George left. Yeah, and they got out. Well, the, the you know, the, and then there were two. It starts off with like McCartney says, and then there were two, and tears yeah. spring to his eyes, and it's just him and Ringo, and then thank that's God right. George and Yo- uh, John and Yoko turn up, and they all yeah. hammer into this primal howl yeah, so that they don't right. have to say anything. Um, yeah. Uh, they just have to do it, uh, uh, get it out of their system. Um, yeah, because that was one of the things I noted as well was um, the, I wrote on my notes that the, the mood lifted hugely after George left in the film. I don't know how long, you know, how much was cut and all that, but they just seemed to be ha- going bonkers. I don't know if they had a few too many drinks or, um, or taken something else. But yeah, in the aftermath of George leaving, they just all seem to be going a bit bananas. And I think they just, I don't know if that was anything to do with it or, um, or if they were like that every day, but we just didn't see it in the film. I don't know. No, it's certainly a release of tension, but it was yeah, possibly right, the, swing it. the coldest line in the whole thing after mm-hmm. George goes is, oh, we'll just get Clapton. I think that was Lennon. Oh, I think, was it Lennon? Yeah. We'll just get Eric. It's like, oh, yeah. no. Yeah, <laughs> Wait yeah. a minute. Um, that's well, I don't know if that was just yeah because it, it's not like they it, they shouldn't be a, shouldn't have been uncomfortable around each other to to have to say something just to fill a silence you know what I mean they should have been comfortable yeah. with the silence around each other so yeah it was a bit and George seemed to have uh, something else I noted down it was um, he seemed to have a bit of an inferior inferiority complex when it came to Clapton he kept comparing himself to Clapton didn't he yeah um, yeah how he, so, how he couldn't he couldn't do that he couldn't improvise he could make he could make lines what Clapton does. He, he could make lines up but he couldn't take take something and yeah couldn't mid, resolve them and yeah, go with it yeah mid song and go with it mm. I mean, of course so, the the uh, you're talking about morale and and how it was the the one of the highlights of the thing for me was obviously obviously when Billy Preston walks in yeah and they're instantly they're all on their metal for a start. It's like, oh God, there's, yeah. a, there's, there's a guy who's played with Ray Charles here. So, someone the, else is in the group, yeah. A yeah. guy who Ray Charles gave the yeah. organ tr- to and said, oh, you could play it in my band, mate. I'll just stick to the piano. <laughs> oh yeah. my God. Yeah. So, um, you know, this is a guy they all know um, and they love him. And mm. it's amazing instantly that the, the, yeah. everything is is brought up to speed. To snuff. Um, yeah, check, check out McCartney's face when the, the, when um, uh, Billy Preston first comes in. The first time we we hear him, McCartney's yeah. face is is a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, yeah, that was uh, uh, that got me thinking. So you know, at the end of it, uh, uh, you know, when I got to the end of the last part, I was thinking, okay, if I could go back and wave a wand and do, change things, what would I do? Um, and I, my thought was, okay, I'd get Lennon. 
to I'd ask Lennon to leave <laughs> if, if I was at the the, the uh, at this point in time, and I'd I'd ask Billy to join Billy Preston uh, because Lennon went on to become a very unpleasant human. I think it's fair to say, um, and I think that was starting to show at this point. Uh, at, at times, not always, because they were having a good old lark about, like in the old days, as you saw later mm. on. And it was generally joyous, the film. But yeah, I think I think Lennon was the problem. Um, and yeah, I think if you know that whole thing about what if you know if, if they turn left instead of right, and you know maybe if uh, they could have kept the thing together a bit longer and got Billy Preston in full time, uh, yeah, I mm. mean they might still be going today like the Rolling Stones. Plus, also <laughs> as, as I said earlier on. Uh, the, they were under no pressure to do this. They, they, no, they were right. millionaires. Uh, and yep. at, at one point, I think it's George again says, oh, oh, we could put these, I could put these on my album or, or my, oh, is it my show or something like that? He said, I could put these on my album. So mm. why didn't they? Why didn't they just mm. go, oh, d- d- all right, lads, I'm just doing a solo album. Is that okay? Yeah, sure, no problem. Mm. Um, but, um, well, the the, the, so, the solo records that they they started, didn't they? After this, uh, which we'll yeah. come on to later, but be, before the Beatles split up, the solo recordings were starting to happen. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, and that's um, I mean, we saw also in this film uh, snippets of quite a few songs. I didn't make a note of all of them that went on to become uh, yeah. solo numbers. Um, uh, Give me some truth. We saw the, the seed of the embryo of jealous guy it was that yeah. completely different lyrics wasn't it but all things much now. all things must pass all things uh, must pass just, Katie just boy. another day yep yeah Katie boy so there was quite a few there was an instrumental i think from paul um so yeah they, they already had uh they had material but it never got used for this record which was interesting um yeah i guess we'll they never had, know they had if yeah. if they were actively saving it for themselves because they thought it was great, or mm. or it was just a, a number of things they had that, that that in the end got well, I can do that now. You know, it's, uh, now, yeah. now we're not together. I can do that song of mine that, that I was going to do. Um, yeah, spe- especially for George, obviously, because yeah. uh, you know, straight after he was the first one, I think. Uh, I should just say I'm not an expert on the Beatles. There are plenty of experts out there. I'm just an enthusiast, so I might get some of these facts wrong. Uh, but I think George was the first to release a solo album after the Beatles. So. Yeah, I think All Things Must Pass. That was a triple album, so it tells you how much material we he had. That he just stuff. couldn't get couldn't get past the uh, past the doorman of Lennon and McCartney. Um, yeah, yeah, interesting stuff. Interesting. Uh, I don't think we can uh, pass on mentioning Mal Evans. What well, legend? Uh, the, the legend Mel <laughs> Evans, who I, I'd heard of, I knew who he was, but I didn't quite get how much a part of the the band he was. Yeah, um, and a joyous moment. There were plenty of joyous moments in this film. It's, but it, um, imagine how Mel, tense it would have been had Mel not been there to to do yeah, stuff for them. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. uh, 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 just that's uh, just great. Uh, the, the anvil playing on uh, yeah on, <laughs> on Maxwell, Maxwell Silverhammer. Silver Get an anvil, but, Mel. Okay, yeah, yeah. and then there it is. The next, the next yeah. scene, you see, there's an anvil and a hammer. Dink, dink. Yeah. Um, and it, rumor has it that, that I, did, I did hear that uh, the reason they got Mel to do that, and this might be common knowledge or might be, not be true at all, uh, the reason they got Mel to do the uh, hammer on the anvil was because Ringo wasn't strong enough to lift the, an- oh, the hammer. Oh, God. <laughs> that's true. Surely not. <laughs> I don't know. And Mel's well, no, a quite a big it, chap. You know, a big be, unit, yeah. Being a roadie yeah. used to lifting things, I suppose. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. it was like six foot five or something, yeah. wasn't he? Um, yeah. Uh, tragic story, really, Mel. Um, his life ended, yeah, yeah. Trage- in tragedy, mm. um, very sadly. He seemed like a thoroughly good bloke. Yeah. No, it was great. Yeah. And uh, it's my mate Jeff, uh, who's a, a, a huge Beatles fan, um, to his highlight. And I think this is this is worth uh, this is worth saying is is uh, Maureen Starkey, Ringo's wife, yeah, appears in the later parts uh, as they get closer to the concert and, um, and during the concert, um, and she is just so into it. It's it's yeah. great. She's just bopping around, and, and uh, every you know other people are just a bit too cool for school. And yeah. uh, should I be doing this? But she is 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 right into the music all the time. And I, th- I think when yeah. uh, when when the concert ends and McCartney goes off 
the roof. He goes, snakes more. Um, yeah. Because he's seen her bopping up and down in the corner. Number um, one cheerleader, yeah. It's fantastic. It's really mm. great. And, um, and that was that was a that was a big highlight for Jeff, and uh, I totally agree with him. Um, yeah, it was lovely stuff. Yeah, we saw a bit of Linda in there as well, taking photos, uh, and we've, yeah. we've seen a lot of those photos before. Yeah, um, yeah, I think they're all at that point in their life, weren't they? Where, uh, yeah, they were ready to settle down and have kids and all that. I don't know if any of them had kids at that. Well, John had had kids yeah. at that point, didn't he? Yeah, with Cynthia. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but they're all reaching that that stage. Um, then at one on. point, they uh, when they're talking about ven- what they're going to do in venues and stuff, um, they mention uh, we could just go off to a farm. Now, yeah. is this? Uh, I, I should have looked. Tried to, tried to look this up, but obviously McCartney and and Linda did go off. They bought one. Uh, I think they already have one at that point. Do they already have that far? Well, I, I think, think uh, so. Well, they got it around this time, if not because. Yeah. Um, I know he started doing some of his recordings uh, after, straight after this, yeah. up there. So it must have been around that time. I just mentioned in the context of them doing some kind of live gig at mm. a farm. Uh, uh-huh. hmm, I don't know, but yeah, yeah. maybe yeah, maybe he did. Maybe he's already already have his little bolt hole mm. um, where he knocked out all those songs. Yeah, yeah, and it, you know he deliberate. That was a deliberate uh, ploy of his to stay away from the big recording studios, wasn't it? And just uh, start again. He yeah. didn't want the free air time at uh, the f- free studio time at EMI and all that stuff. No. Um, no. Yeah. God, so much to talk about. I've just got huge lists here, and we're just, I, I, um, yeah, we're just just going down the list talking. It's just my my thoughts. Um, a big moment which we touched on earlier was uh, when George up, up and up and left. Uh, that moment, you know, he's having a conversation with with Paul, and Paul's trying to drive things along. George just clearly wasn't up for it, was he? Didn't want Paul to be talking to him in that way. I don't think Paul was doing anything really wrong, but Paul's just clearly just a workaholic and he's got the passion and he really wants to do it. And, uh, you know, I don't think George really did, you know. Yeah. Um, and that, that thing about, uh, you know, um, uh, Paul said, I'm, I'm scared of being the boss. I don't want to be the boss, but I have been. I don't want it to be that way. I'm just trying to get you all going. And uh, Yeah. Yeah, and George was kind of. It, what was the quote? I can hear. I can hear myself annoying you, or something. Yeah, like I've got that. that down. He says, "I'm trying to help you know, but I can always yeah. hear myself annoying you." And I'm yeah. trying. To, and Harrison comes back with, "No, you're not annoying me." But obviously, yeah. was incredibly yeah. short. Uh, McCartney yeah. says, "I get so I can't say." And Harrison says, "You don't annoy me anymore." And it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. yeah that sounds. I think you do. Yeah. And the other and, point you know, where uh, where Harrison says, "I think we should have a divorce." Mm. Um, and McCartney says, well, I said that at the meeting, but it's getting near it now, you know. Mm, and Leonard yeah. says, who'd have the children? Um, <laughs> mm, okay. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I mean, uh, George was, yeah, p- kind of passive aggressive insofar as you just tell me what to play and I'll play it. Yeah. And it is, uh, the, qu- the quote is, whatever it is that will please you, I'll do it. Yeah. And, uh, mm. and he, and he let, he did, I think, Actually, the, the, this was just the edit from the film. I think him up and leaving was a bit after that. Yeah, quite a bit, quite a bit after that that conversation. But um, yeah, and famously left uh, with the quote, "See you around the clubs." Yeah, but, I, but it's you know it's, it's uh, you yeah, know what you I'll you know I'll play whatever you want me to play. Um, these they're not kind of three chord wonders anymore. You know these songs don't really need. Yeah, it's not twist know, and shout, first, is it? First chorus, mid late. No. Done. You know, that kind of yeah. thing. This these are things that need arranging and and it does need people to say how they think they want them to go. Uh yeah. So while they're saying that to McCartney, or while George is saying that to McCartney, I'm sure if George had been allowed to have any songs to uh, the, or as many or more songs, um he would have been doing the directing for his songs as well. And as Lennon would too. Um they all mm. would have been uh in, in an ensemble uh, recording session, saying how it was supposed to go, yeah. um, if 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 they're on their own at Abbey Road, fair enough. You can just do what you like, and you can put down more of the song um, without having to annoy people, because um, yeah. everybody can kind of play drums and mm. bass and stuff. Well, no. I should qualify that. Lennon is a rubbish bass player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he had a cool bass, though, that bass Fender baritone Fender, six string yeah. guitar thingy. That was cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, uh, like but, that. 
but don't listen to Lennon's bass playing on no. the longer winding road uh, or some others um, because he's not good yeah. at that. Uh, and I, uh, there is a note in uh, in, in the Ian McDonald book, why didn't they go back and fix some of these wonky bass lines that he put in? In the recordings. You know? Well, I guess the, well, the, 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 the goal at the start was to, Record the, al- the album live, right? It was essentially yeah. a live album. That was, yeah. that was what they were meant to do I from guess. the start, and I think they they try to stick to that the whole time. Mm. So you know, if if I'm going to do this, then you're you're going to have to play bass. Yeah, um, they could have rehearsed it more and got more out of it. And uh, Paul could have showed John exactly what bass line he wanted to play. <laughs> maybe, at the risk maybe, of him walking out. At the risk yeah. of him walking out, but um, yeah, yeah, that's just that's what they did. But yeah, their, their writing and recording became like that because. You know, after they decided to stop touring, which was 66, was it? Yeah. Uh, you know, then all of a sudden they weren't, li- they weren't together 24-7 like they used to be, you know, and mm. they weren't in, under pressure to record like they used to be. So uh, it was, the writing and recording was more of an ensemble, I think, or the arranging, if you like. But um, yeah, as you say, uh, you know, Paul, you know, he lived in St. John's Wood around the corner and he, he'd come up with a song and he'd pop around to Abbey Road the next day and he'd do the drums and the bass and the piano and the guitar. Um, so it became more and more like that. There, there were solo songs, weren't they, with the, the rest of the band being a backing band? Yeah. I guess, yeah. But, what, yeah, when you have to record it live, that's not, that doesn't work. No. Um, so I guess you got... Ringo sing. Yeah. <laughs> they, they were so high on drugs, they let Ringo sing. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you, uh, you've got some... Uh, you got some notes about what happened next, didn't you? Really? Yeah, maybe we um, could, uh, yeah. I mean, just I, I briefly think, delve yeah, into that. Well, yeah, well, I mean, we've said we've said our bit. Well, we can't. We could go on for hours and hours here, and we've got very conscious not to. So I did. Uh, I think I've said anything, everything I wanted to say about it. Really, of, yep. well, for part for part one of this podcast. Um, so I just, yeah, I just got, kind of got a bit of a chronology of what happened after this. So as we know, um, this was in. End of January '69, of course, because that was that was it. Mm. So in February, straight afterwards, um, the Beatles appointed a new manager. This this character called Alan Klein, uh, who Glyn Johns warned them against in the film, didn't he? He yep. just kind of stay stay away from him. Uh, and yeah, he's a wrong one. But uh, John and, uh, and and George and Ringo seem to be quite happy with him. So yeah, he was having officially extricated, Sorry, mate. Now, having extricated the Rolling Stones from a terrible deal, yeah, um, he was flavour of the month. Mm. Whilst he was probably ripping off the Rolling Stones, ripping off the Rolling Stones. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> he had got yeah. them out of an even worse deal. So um, yeah. that's why a lot of people uh, respected mm. his uh, business acumen, as it were. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, but Paul wasn't too happy with this. He, uh, so he appointed Eastman and Eastman. Yeah, um, as kind of overseers or general counsel or whatever on, on this. I don't know too much about this. I was meant to do a bit more, more research, but I haven't. But that's Linda's family business, Linda's right? Linda's family. Linda's dad. Yeah. 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 yeah so, um, yeah, there was that. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention it now, but I've got a section here, um, further reading. There's a book written just a few years ago, actually, called You Never Give Me Your Money by Peter Doggett. It's quite a famous book on the Beatles. It's all about their financial affairs and all that kind of stuff. I haven't read it. Have you read it, Captain? I haven't. I have read other Peter Doggett things, which I right. like very much. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. uh, I think it's a bit heavy, one. but it's all about the business I'm affairs sure. of the Beatles, yeah. which is extremely complicated. Um, and they were all suing each other, weren't they? It was became a bit laughable in the end. Mm. Uh, so that if you're interested in that side of things, then there is that book. Um, then we go into March, um, and Paul and Linda got married, and John and Yoko got married. So that's not long after um, Yoko had got divorced because we saw that in this film, didn't we? Yeah. So a couple of Beatles weddings there. Uh, then uh, in April of 69, uh, Get Back, the single, was, was released. Uh, they, they, they went with that as the first single from these sessions. Um, made number one in the UK and the US. And uh, coincidentally, that was number one the day I was born. Uh, so yeah. I'm giving away my age there. But yeah, yeah, that was my, that was a, that's a pretty cool uh, song to have as your uh, birthday song. Crikey. Uh, yeah, and then they're straight into the into this studio to start recording Abbey Road, um, which went out on to be the final album they recorded, but not the final one that was released. Uh, yeah. All all of the tapes from this um, uh, from these let it be get back sessions uh, just went into storage, really, weren't they? They were just put on ice. 
Yeah. Uh, they were recorded at the end. So there so you go. The, there's there's another thing about you know, they're all falling out and they're all arguing and all that kind of stuff. But there yeah, was enough three, th- impetus. Yeah, two months later. Yeah. Impetus to go and do Abbey Road in yeah. a familiar situation with George again, Martin. And um, and there's there's another record, uh, a very terrific sounding record. Um, yeah, I th- I would say if I could only save one Beatles album from a fire, it would be Abbey Road for me, mm. I think. Uh, yeah, I think it's my favourite Beatles album, I would say. Could you pick yours, Captain, would you say? What, right now? Oh, God. Yep, right now. I know everybody says Revolver, but that's probably the yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, fair enough. Another question then, do you ever listen to any Beatles albums pre-Rubber Soul, should we say? Do you any listen to the old ones? Do you ever listen, put them on? Album as album, uh, I'm not really sure. I did the exercise the other week um, of chronological recording order, yeah. so I've yeah. listened to a few of them. Um, as uh, you are probably going to mention, um, a book by Ian MacDonald yes. called Revolution in the Head, yes. which um, has turned a couple of my mates on to the Beatles. They didn't think they were Beatles were all that much. Yeah. Um, but one of them specifically read the Revolution in the Head book, which is a description uh, – of each of the songs in recording order, order of recording, hmm. um, and is excellent. I would I would recommend that to yeah, anyone who has right. remote, the remotest interest. Um, and in answer to your question about did I play the early albums? Well, I have done. Do I play the early albums regularly? Uh, not so much. Um, yeah. I find them too variable in quality. Um, I, this yeah. this may be something to do with the fact that they were on limited studio time and not unlimited studio yeah. time. Yeah, you've got three time. hours to make an album, boys. Off you go. Bash it out. And you yeah. look at it and you think, well, it's great that they got the first album done in 10 hours or however much mm. it was, but they were rushing like hell yeah. to get it finished. Uh, yeah. And things had to go by the wayside and, and substandard things that they used to knock out live yeah. or, or, or covers that they had to quickly do um, because they'd yeah. done them in Hamburg, um, do not um, an album make. So for those early years, the gems for me just shine out. Uh, and when you listen to those early recordings, you you know what they are. They're the, yep. they're the statement singles generally. Um, uh, Help in particular is, is probably mm. my most... It's probably my least favourite Beatles album. Mm, okay. Uh, they just seem to be drifting more than more than a bit there, um, I think. Anywho. Yeah. Um, yeah, funny what you say about uh, the quality of the early stuff. So, yeah, what, what that's something you'll learn from reading Revolution in the Head is uh, it, it will say in the book, and if you listen at one minute, four seconds, you'll hear the fluffed bass. Yeah. yeah, or you hear a clunky edit. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, warts and all. S- some people are critical of the book. I think it's brilliant. Some people criticise it because it's ruining songs for them. Because you know there'll, there'll be a great song. Uh, I don't know, uh, uh, an epic like I don't know, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, for example. Uh, and you think, right, I'm looking forward to reading about this, and y- y- you get half a page. Uh, well, the melody's a bit flat, and uh, the playing's a bit sloppy. <laughs> so Ian yeah. McDonald, it's 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 not warts. Uh, it's warts and all. You know, he, and it, it's his opinion yeah, it as is. well in a lot of cases. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's an absolutely essential read if you're interested in you know getting d- down in the weeds with the music of the Beatles and how they were written and recorded. Yeah, uh, and there is an accompanying Spotify playlist. I found one. I don't know if there's more than one, but someone's gone to the trouble of putting all these songs in the book oh, in I've that chronological it. order. I've got one anyway, so we could link. Oh, to you that made your own, did you? Yeah, yeah. Well, someone else has made one, but he's put. A, he's I put. Um, he's, he, there's an error. He's made a mistake. The, the person that created yeah. the one that I'm using. That's why there's, I did the one yeah. that I did. He's put, I want to hold your hand instead of I want to be your man or something like that. Anyway, uh, anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so April, May, June, July, August, uh, that's when Abbey Road's getting uh, recorded. During this time, John Lennon's involved in a car crash. So he's, he's absent for some of those sessions. He got quite injured. I think he was up in Scotland or something like that. Uh, and then 60, uh, September 69, at the Abbey Road album is released. Uh, and... Uh, it's also, we're also starting to see the emergence of some solo material. Um, if piece of chance, cold turkey, that sort of stuff coming out from Lennon and Paul McCartney's working on his first his first album. Uh, John and Yoko are knocking around doing the kind of stuff John and Yoko were doing. You know, lying in bed in for a, a couple of days. 
Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. War is over, graffiti, and give peace a chance, and all that John and Yoko stuff. Uh, the, the heroin years, I think I'm right in saying. I think there was a lot of uh, very hard drugs knocking about at that point. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know, you you hear about people that knew Lennon at that time. He was a very unpleasant person, they say. So I don't know about that. Um, so in January 70, so after Abbey Road's come out, they're still not done. <laughs> So nope. they go back and they finish the rest of the Let It Be album. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, all the kind of acoustic stuff, um, two of us, songs like that, um, which they couldn't obviously record in the live, in, on the rooftop. They couldn't record acoustic instruments up there. Yeah. So all that kind of stuff happens in January. And um, and then, uh, again, I, you might know more about this than me, but then Phil Spector is enlisted to uh, do some remixes of the Let It Be album, which uh, upset Paul McCartney greatly. Um, yes. Yeah. Because uh, he didn't really know that it was going to happen. It was Lennon gave the yeah. tapes to... Lennon gave the tapes to Spectre, and off he went and put strings all over it to upset George at Martin because uh, he didn't like some of the arrangements that were done. Um, and there have been various attempts to put the record straight, fix it, not with... Uh, not least is obviously the most recent... Let It Be re-releases where you hear what Glyn Johns uh, had recorded during the mm. sessions. Um, I can't remember when Let It Be Naked came out. Was it 2003? Yeah, which, was, which was McCartney's version of what he hoped the album would have been like without Spectre's intervention. And it's mm. worth a listen. Um, yep. Nothing uh, for me uh, beats... I almost hate to say uh, the, the original version, the spectrized version, because it's so familiar. Um, I can understand where McCartney was coming from. Um, we talked about a bad bass playing earlier on. Some of the strings covers up the bad bass playing. Um, yeah. Of Lennon. Uh, something had to be done, I guess. Um, mm. The Glyn Johns version is, is, whilst interesting, is is monumentally not commercial, I don't think. I don't think they could have put that out in its in its uh, in its form. Yeah, so, I mean, um, uh, obviously, yeah. the long and winding road springs to mind. So, uh, yep. yeah, you could you could do a comparison. Listen to the different versions of that. Um, the original one, the Phil Spector one, has got the strings all over it, and I think it's okay. I've got no problem with with the strings. I think they sound quite good. Um, but compared to the others, so um, yeah. Uh, mm. And this was the point where I think. Uh, they had already decided some weeks beforehand that that was the end of the band. I think John was the one who pulled the plug, said yeah. he was leaving. Uh, and that was that. And they kept it under their hats for a few weeks while Phil Spector was getting the album Let It Be finished. Uh, and it, uh, the, the the date was April the 10th, 1970. That's when the, the breakup was announced officially. That was the end of yeah. the week. That was the, that was the last date. It wasn't uh, long before really, that was when Harrison had, Harrison was the last one. He popped in, yeah, <laughs> to finish "I Me Mine," yeah, which is on the Lady B album. That's the last one that was that was done, and that, that's right. That is quite late on in the in the in the piece mm. um, to him doing that. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. So, um, yes, that was the end of it. And in, in May, so nearly a month after that, they, re- they released the album "Let It Be." That's the end. Um, a little footnote, <laughs> which I've wrote, wrote on my notes. It's worth pointing out. So uh, from uh, 63, I think the Beatles kind of started. Well, they started before that, but, you know, the first yeah. album I think was 63. And this last album came out in 1970. That's seven years. They did all of this. I think it's 12, 13 albums. And when they broke up, none of them were yet 30. Which, yeah. uh, just think about that for a second. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't write a check <laughs> when I was thirty, I couldn't pay my no. banks. I couldn't, couldn't pay my council tax at thirty. This lot of left behind um, this legacy of, of work, which will never go away. I don't no, think George, it's, George was twenty six. Yeah, George was twenty six. John and Ringo were twenty nine. When yep. uh, I think Paul was twenty eight or twenty. Yeah. So ju- yeah, just think about that for a second. So what? Uh, yeah, when you're watching this stuff happening in this film, they're all about you know mid to late twenties. George is, George is about twenty four, something like that, twenty five. No, yeah. a bit older, whatever, when all this is happening. Uh, incredible. Just incredible. Uh, yeah, so it's been an amazing journey. The, 
because of the t- I don't know what time the film the films were released on Disney Plus, uh, but over here in in New Zealand, uh, it was nine p.m. They came on. Yeah, um, I don't know if that was synchronized around the world, so they all went out at the same time. I guess it was. Uh, so yeah, I had three three very late nights in a row last weekend um, watching watching all three of them. I haven't caught up on my sleep yet, but I'm going straight back in next weekend to watch all three of them again if I can. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I suspect there will be a shorter version out. I think um, there will. Uh, the, just for just for just for idle listeners who are tuning in to 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 get a bit of Beatles content, um, seven hours plus of your of your of of get back might not be your thing. There is an yeah. awful lot of fannying about uh, in the studio. Um, there are some it, brilliant moments, but you have to go through an awful lot of stuff. Now, I think Jack, you've got Jackson. A- sorry, Peter Jackson had done a hundred minute version of this film for all the posh people when they went to see it the uh, premiere. at the premiere. Yeah. And if he releases that, watch that because yeah. it will be great. Um, there, there were some scathing, I, I would say scathing reviews of this uh, just after it came yeah, out sure. from some music journalists. I quite respect actually. And I think they've got the wrong end of the stick. This isn't, you know, you're not watching Britain's got talent here. This isn't bubblegum viewing. This is, a historical documentary, isn't it? This isn't. Yeah, it's not entertainment necessarily. Um, obviously, no. it's for the fans, but for anyone who's interested in this period of time, this uh, you know culturally what was going on at the time and uh, the the songwriting process. Just if, if you watch two minutes and watch that bit where where Paul wrote "Get Back," it blew my mind. It, I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. Goosebumps and everything. I just what did I just witness that? <laughs> Because you don't see it, you know all the great songs that we all know and love. You, you never see them getting written, do you? You know, no. I've done. I've never whole, seen anything like that. The whole fuss. Uh, say the last, I don't know, the last hour of the last episode with the rooftop mm. concert and the whole fuss yeah. about that. And there's people in yeah. the street and it's loud, and it's a kind of a the sixties in microcosm where they're interviewing, yeah, uh, hip young things and crusty old bowler hatted bankers yeah. um and getting their views uh on what's going on. Um yeah, the police were called that. Yeah the police were called. A couple, uh, say, of, couple of blogs turn up. They say policemen are getting younger but looking at those two <laughs> I'm not really not sure they are because they look about seventeen. They look barely able to shave. Uh, yeah. and they, they really don't know what to do and they have to wait for Sarge to come from the station <laughs> to sort them out. Uh, two of my policemen here. Yes, they're up on the roof. Um, oh, God. It's amazing. But the, that, that last hour is great for fashion, uh, for 60s attitudes. Yeah. Um, oh, what about that the... that um, kind of stuff. It's just great. What about... Was she the... Uh press officer or someone like that for Apple. The young girl looked like Twiggy with the, the glasses on, the, the pixie haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah. a little snapshot of the fashion right there as well. Um, yeah. yeah, very, very cool. It's very, very, very good. So, yeah, I've been waiting a long time for this and it's it's out there now. So It's delivered. It, it's delivered and it's done. Uh, and I think we're done as well. Cause I think I, we are, yeah. I, yeah, don't want to go on too, too long. So thank you for listening. Uh, get in touch with us if you've got any comments on what we've said. I'm sure there have been some factual inaccuracies in what we've said. Uh, so we're not experts, so don't or if us. Or if there's questions about, uh, you know, but generally about the Beatles, then just pile in on the socials and we'll do our best to uh, to give our opinion and even yeah. facts also. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, good. Uh, and do look up what happened to... Uh, Mal Evans as well afterwards because uh, yeah it was a sad story he was the most probably the most likeable person in that whole film yeah yeah so okay let's sign right. off shall we so we um, yeah peace and love everyone see you around the clubs yeah you're not all you've been listening to only a podcast if you would like to get in touch and share your feedback and ideas we'd love to hear from you Go to onlyapodcast.com or you can find us at onlyapodcast on Twitter and Instagram or via our Facebook page. Remember, it's only a podcast.